shit, I forgot my balls. Get to the meat of the question. The part that <laughs> uh, Good to see nobody wanted my balls. There goes my balls. <sighs> Welcome to Invictaland, the place where the laws of the universe do not apply. Especially in Madame Avion. Doo -doo. I'm going to answer a viewer question. I did get an extra question and I think it's a good one and it deserves its own video because why not, right? And then I'm gonna do laundry. There's a big pile of laundry right here just waiting to be washed with my name on it. So, but first, coffee. Can't do chores without coffee. Um, I'll preface the question by saying that when I first read it, and I'll screen that before you, When I first read this question, I have to admit I was a bit triggered. And that triggering occurred because I've seen this question phrased in multiple ways at multiple times from multiple members of the male species. And it always tells me just one thing. However, when this guy asked the question, he had uh, added other groups of people to it, other than the one specific bit that triggered me. So I'm going to go a little bit easier on him because he's not quite in the same category as the guy, that, the other guys that typically ask this question. I know that's a really convoluted way of describing it, but. We'll see what okay, so let's dive into this question. I'll post it for you guys to read for yourself, but let's paraphrase it. Um, he asks, what do your husband, family, what do your husband, friends, or family think about you sharing so much of yourself on YouTube and do they make any do they give me grief about it or make any suggestions so let's for now skip over the part where I got triggered <laughs> so let's start with the friends and family do they give me any grief over it and I can honestly say no they don't um, I in fact haven't really heard a peep out of any of them other than good for you yay good job that's it so no I have friends and family they don't give a fuck what I do so uh, they have not made any suggestions I have one friend who is like on YouTube and she has you know supported me and and I know her in real life as well so um, she has been a great friend for many years and Thanks, Lindsay. <laughs> but yeah, no, she she's cool, but any of my real life friends, like, they don't care. Nobody cares about what you do, really. Except strangers on the internet. <laughs> One of my purposes for this channel is to document my life. So I I'm child free. And so there's not really like any people that I can kind of pass down my legacy to, so to speak. And one of the reasons I wanted to start a YouTube was to like document and put out, you know, the world as I see it, right? I think any artist kind of, that's part of their self-expression. And they do that through whatever mediums they want to. And part of my expression has been various things. It's been through dance, it's been through fine art, uh, painting and drawing, it's been through photography, and most currently YouTube. 
So, you know, passing down a legacy of sorts and like just recording life is part of the reason I want to do this. So yeah, like I put a lot of myself out here. Um, I think that's part of showing authenticity, I guess. So yeah, part of being authentic, I think is, is actually just having the courage or the the bravery or the lack of shame <laughs> to put oneself out there, you know? So that's what I, I admire when other creators do that, you know, when you get like these glimpses into their life and they're not afraid to talk about things and that's what compels me to watch them. So I've been inspired by those types of creators. So for me to do this, it doesn't feel like that big of a deal, I guess. And I don't really have, like, I'm an introvert, like pretty hardcore introvert. And I don't really have like this huge, I don't have a huge following online. And I definitely don't have a few, huge following in real life. Like I am not super well connected. And so there's not a whole lot of people in my life that I fear their opinion of me, you know? In fact, is there anybody? Like maybe one person, but even then, like I'm not gonna alter who I am to please them. <laughs> that's just not, that's not what I would do. So yeah, it doesn't even factor in, you know, what other people think necessarily. I just kind of do what I do. And so the other part, ooh, ooh my timer is almost up have to go attend to the laundry again. So after I do this, I'm going to get to the meat of the question. The part that... <laughs> uh, more bounce for the ounce. <laughs> or is it to the ounce? I don't remember. <laughs> oh shit, I forgot my balls. I got these dryer balls. They're supposed to replace um, fabric softener sheets. Okay, so now let's get to the meat of the question. Or not the meat of the question, but the part that triggered me. Um, I hate that word, by the way. I'm only using it because everybody knows what it means by now. But the word trigger triggers me. <laughs> when I first read the question, I my brain got stuck on the word husband, of course. Because multiple times over my life, I've had uh, males... <laughs> people hate it when uh men refer to women as females so i'm gonna throw that one back i've had males um ask me a variant of this question and what does your husband think about you doing blah 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 what does your husband think about you traveling alone what does your husband think about the kinds of things that you photograph what does your husband think about the kinds of things you write what does your husband think about the kinds of things that you paint at that time? Well, no, we were married at that time when I was doing more painting. But, um, what does your husband think about you belly dancing? What does your husband think about you going out with your friends at the club back in the 20s when I was in my 20s? Blah, 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 when I was in my 20s. <laughs> what does your husband think, you know? And invariably, I'm 40 years old now, invariably, when this question comes up, the implication of it is that the female in question is the property of the male. And he should have some kind of say-so over what you do, who you do it with, where you go, what you say, he, you know, you're the property of your husband and you should always always check with him first and ask his permission for everything you know that traditional 50s lifestyle or whatever which is fine like if you want to live that life that's fine i'm not saying that it's right for everybody i'm not saying that it's wrong for everybody what consenting adults do in their private lives and in their marriages is their business. And if people want to consent 
to being owned, if people want to consent to them being considered the property of their spouse, that's up to them, okay? A lot of people in the kink communities are all about that. So, without diving into that rabbit hole, <laughs> I, the way our marriage is structured, I basically do what I want, and if I think it's going to be something crazy, I ask him first, and then we discuss, and if it turns out it's going to be a big problem, okay, we don't. You know, like, I don't, I don't run things past him or necessarily, like, ask his permission to make YouTube videos. Like, that's not what I'm here for. He watches these YouTube videos, but he's a different way, and he doesn't want to have an account, and he's, like, he's anti-social media and anti, like, you know, for privacy reasons and all of that. He doesn't want to make accounts, so you're never going to see him commenting on anything. Um, but he does watch, you know, and that's that. Like, I, I grant him, and, and that's not even the right way to say, I grant him. It's not mine to give, but, you know, I let him do what he wants. He, he lets me do what I want. That's what I'm trying to say, but that's not a good, a good way to say it. I believe that adults should have agency over what they do with their lives. And when you're in a relationship, you know, you should be pretty aware of what each other values. You know, obviously I value my own freedom and independence a lot. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I know he values his freedom and independence. So for us, it works. For other people, you know, they may want more um, checks and balances or more say so over what their partner does, but that's just not the situation that either of us want to be in, to my knowledge. So I haven't heard otherwise from him in 20 years. So I assume that we're on the same page about that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just kind of like my brain just fixated on what does your husband think? And I was like, Oh, not one of these again. <laughs> you know, like, I just get so sick of versions of that question popping up. And without going down this huge drama rabbit hole about the kinds of guys I think ask those questions, because I think we can all pretty much figure out who asks those questions. It just, it's annoying, okay? I understand the problem's never going to stop. There's always going to be those guys, that subset of guys. And there's probably girls out there that want that, you know, that want somebody to be like overbearing and super jealous and protective and watching their every move. Like, if that's you, go have fun, you know, but I'm a Sagittarian. <laughs> We don't like that kind of shit. <laughs> that does not fly with us. <laughs> so yeah, if you're... I'm always taking suggestions. If you want to suggest something that I should do more of or less of, besides say the word so repeatedly all the time, and take awkward pauses and not really know what I'm saying before I get in front of the camera, then suggest to me what I should do. <laughs> I probably won't take it, but the suggestion is always thoughtful. It's the thought that counts, right? <laughs> nah. I'm out here doing what I'm going to do, and you're going to like it or you're not going to like it. You know what I mean? Life is short. I'm 40. I can't be bothered anymore. It's just what it is. Whoa, I forgot my balls here. <laughs> well, no one took them. Good to see nobody wanted my balls. There goes my balls. <laughs> the ice cream truck is coming. Whee! I love ice cream truck music. <laughs> Actually, it's been a long standing dream of mine that if I were to have a funeral at all, like, I don't know who would go, but 
If I had a funeral, I want them to play ice cream truck music. <laughs> yeah. And I want to be plastinated. Do you know what that is? It's when they fill your, they preserve your body by um, filling your cells with plastic or this polymer stuff. And then they can make um, these sculptures out of your body. Like they flay your skin off and, or they can strip you down to the bones and like show your muscles like, you know, flying off of the bones, like put you in all kinds of weird positions. Yeah, look it up. <laughs> body worlds, that's the exhibit. We went and saw that, I think in Texas. It was really cool. They can slice you so thin that you look like stained glass and the light goes through it. Really cool. Just as a side note. 